Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Another late night, laid back, heavy rotations for you. Uh, not too serious here. Just wanted to show you some cool things I've been picking up. Uh, I've got some really cool videos coming up that you guys are going to love seeing. But uh, just, I was up in my music room tonight and I was like, you know what? I need to show some stuff because if I don't, I'm going to end up forgetting. Um, so, yeah. Got some really cool things to show you guys. Um, if you've been watching my videos, I just bought like a bunch of like metal and mofi and all this crazy stuff from a collector friend of mine who's kind of liquidating some things. And so a lot of that's going out in the shop this Saturday. Um, you know, I was thinking this, this Saturday is July 3rd. And I get a lot of drop-in visitors from people all over the country when they go on vacation. They're out of town and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a big drop on July 3rd. So if there's anybody traveling, coming from out of town, I'll have some good stuff for them to go through. And uh, I've seen that a lot of you guys are coming through to go to the beach or like whatever. And uh, you're passing and you're going to stop in. So hopefully we'll have a lot of good stuff for you in the shop this week. I've been pulling tons of stuff out of my um, personal collection uh and just picking up tons of stuff i have bought some serious mega grails on my want list lately um and so i've got 10 that are like huge i um i've been selling some of my personal things to achieve these grails so i'll be showing those in a video probably next week early next week the 10 mega grails so that'll be coming up, and I've got some more stuff going up. But anyways, all that to say, been digging lately a lot. Like, I always dig a lot, but lately it's been like every single day. Uh, just like the other day, if you follow me on Instagram, I was posting about it. Like, I was in this storage unit. It's like freaking 90 degrees at least outside. And the storage unit was hotter. There's no circulation. I was about to die. I was in this metal box of death. Anyways, but I found some really good stuff in there and like had all these people on Instagram bashing me. We're, we'll talk about that later. Um, but the, the whole controversy behind digging in storage units and the heat and whether, where they're stored and all that stuff. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably followed it and, and saw all that. But uh, anyways, we'll get into that. But the, the guy, the, the private collector friend of mine that brought me all the metal stuff, I made up my mind I was only going to keep like one or two out of there. Well, you we, we know how that goes. There were several in there I had to have. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the metal. There's some metal and punk stuff that he brought me. And then um, a couple weeks ago, I went digging at a friend's house who was a former DJ. And he's kind of selling some things out of his collection to let me kind of go nuts in there and pick out whatever I wanted. So I got some of the grails that I'm going to show from him. But also just got some really cool other stuff. So that stuff's later. So first up is punk and metal. And then we're going to go into like some psychedelic stuff and funk, soul, all that kind of stuff. So uh, first thing I got, I had to keep it. I just, I don't know, you know, have, I've never come across one of these in the wild and I have to buy it online or whatever. This is a Japanese pressing of We Sold Our Souls for Rock and Roll, uh, Black Sabbath. And it's a comp, but it's, it's a cool, I mean, uh, it came on the Spaceship Vertigo label. But it's a really, I mean, super clean, immaculate Japanese press of this. Um, these are really sought after and tough to find. And just the artwork is beautiful on this. And it sounds incredible. So I bought this from him. I kind of paid up to get it because he paid up to get it. And uh, I was like, man, I just don't ever, I've never had one of these before. And I'm such a big Black Sabbath guy that had to keep it. So this is really, really sweet. Um, and I do, like, when I was first started collecting records, um, like, seriously collecting them, I really got, I, like, went into a Japanese press um, obsession, you know. And so lately, I mean, I, I some you know, with Japanese pressing, some of them sound better. A lot of them sound better, but some of them don't. You know, it's a case-by-case -case deal. But at any rate, some of them are cool. That one's really cool. It sounds incredible. Glad to have it. Um, this is one that I've been wanting for a while. This is Danzig. It's a, got the promo stamp. Um, it's, you know, gay fold Danzig. And my gosh, I mean, I'm going to say some things, okay? 
And I talked to Jeremy at the shop about it. If you know Jeremy, he's a big Danzig uh, Misfits fan. And he, I don't know that he agreed with me, but he doesn't, didn't disagree with me. Uh, I passed, I mean, I have not always been into the Misfits. I always saw the t-shirts and my friends liked them and stuff like that. But I, I just couldn't sink my teeth into them. I wasn't really into punk that much for all these years. And then maybe like two years ago, I started like really getting into Misfits and trying to get the records and things like that. And uh, I like the Misfits. I really do. I like Glenn Danzig. But the Danzig stuff, I like better. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it's not a lot better, but I, I just like this album is the pinnacle for me. I love this album. It's just such a freaking rock and roll record. Like it's got, it hits on so many different genres and it's just so good. I mean, it, you would look at it and think it was just some scary heavy metal album. It's not. It's just a, it's like, you know, Elvis meets Black Sabbath. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. But um, it's just, it's a killer record and, uh, you know, produced by Rick Rubin uh, on Deaf American. I've never seen an original press of it, but he brought that in and I was like, keeping that for sure because I've been wanting it. Um, another one he brought me was this Dead Boys, uh, Young, Loud, and Snotty. So a few years ago, I had uh, a lead in Charlotte. This guy had probably 500 punk records and at the time this was like 2010 or 11 the people weren't buying records like they were now you know they, they, they don't there wasn't a lot of guys out hunting for them and i didn't have any money so i would go and he would sell me all his records for three bucks each and i'll go and buy stuff and at that time i didn't know anything about punk I, I i bought a collection that had some punk in it like the year before so i knew a little bit but more or less like what it was worth not what it was and so from him, I, I was getting it. I was getting this stuff pretty cheap, and so I would try to enjoy it before I would sell it. I would I would have to listen to it because I, I kind of formed a relationship with him and really got to to know him and I enjoyed talking to him. And he would recommend things to me and all this stuff. So I didn't want it felt cheap to just buy the stuff and just flip it. I wanted to at least at least listen to everything once. And so this was a record I, I got to have his collection that I loved and I listened to a bunch. I ended up. You know, going through some hard times and having to sell everything a few, a couple times, so it didn't survive. And I've been looking for one for the past, you know, a couple of years. I just hadn't seen one. And I, you know, I try not to go online, except for I kind of always do. But for punk stuff, it's different. I, I like to find it in person for some reason. But this is an incredible punk record, man. I love this record so much, and I'm so glad to have it. Uh, and it just reminds me of that guy and all the great punk records I got from him and the exposure I got to punk. Uh, while we're on that same, on that same uh, vein, um, we got Henry Rollins' "Hot Animal Machine." I've never heard this before, but um, I love Henry Rollins and I like Black Flag. Uh, this one I did listen to Henry Rollins' uh, "Lifetime." This is an original '88 press, uh, and it's just a, it's a it's a really good record. I, I don't um, know why this isn't worth more. It's worth like t probably. 20 25 bucks it's original press you know 88 punk you know i guess this is punk slash hardcore um and you guys know i'm talking out of my butt a little bit i know don't, don't know everything about punk but um i like henry rollins like black flag kept both of those i like them a lot um and so some stuff he brought me wasn't punk or metal uh but this is one just kind of cool this flaming lips this is um 30th anniversary of their first um ep uh, this on green vinyl it's autographed by wayne um it's kind of interesting story behind this so this came out in 2013 i was landscaping in 2013 really really tough financial times which if you watch my videos you know i talk about it all the time i, I like for years and years hand to mouth i mean couldn't <laughs> just I couldn't hold down a job because I hated everything I was doing. It's just, it was so hard. Um, the only thing I was good at was finding records. And at that time, it wasn't beneficial. It was just fun. So anyways, um, this came out in 2013. I remember it coming out. And I can't remember if it was for Record Store Day or why. But I know it was very limited. And, um, you know, when it came out, I had no money. And, I mean, if this thing was $20, I didn't have $20. I don't know. But I remember just not being able to get it. 
and I wanted it so bad, and I ended up looking for it on eBay, and I think the prices went up on eBay or something. I don't know. I mean, it was autographed. Um, and so he had this, and I bought it from him. I got it from him for cheap because we looked it up, and I was like, this this, this could be worth some money, and he's like, it could be. I don't know. You know, and um, turns out it's not. <laughs> it's worth like 20 bucks. You know, so I got it from him for a little less than 20 and you know, it's the type of thing where it's, it's, um, having it now, it's just kind of cool. I do like the flaming lips. Uh, I don't like them as much as I did then, but, um, I'm going to listen to it and enjoy it for a little while at least before I sell it. If I do end up selling it, uh, this is one I've been trying to get to. This was, um, Lucifer Black Mass. So by looking at this, you would think this was a metal record. It's not, not at all. Um, uh, this is a synth record. Uh, Mort Garson is a Moog synthesizer, brilliant genius. Uh, Plantasia, Mother Earth's Plantasia is probably my favorite that he did. Um, and I have that record and I was going to pull it, but I forgot. But it's a fantastic Moog synthesizer record. I love the sound of a Moog synthesizer. Just something about it. I love it. Um, there's a Moog synthesizer, I don't know if it's a factory or a store or whatever, but... Um, Bob Moog's from Asheville, North Carolina, and so there's a like a little exhibit type thing uptown. If you've been there in Asheville, you've seen like it's a huge Moog, Moog synthesizer painted on the side of this building. And um, every time that I can, I'll go in there, and they let you play with the theremins and like all these different Moog crazy things, and it's just fun, you know, it's just fun. But I love watching videos of people messing around with Moog synthesizers. I love the sound. Uh, but Bob, uh, not Bob Moog, Mort Garson was um just a master of the moog synthesizer and uh, how mother earth's plantasia is a little bit more like um traditional like you know a little bit more i don't know poppy i guess you would say this is a little more dark as you would think i don't know why he did this this seems a little out of character for him but i guess i just don't know him that well more you must have been going through some things uh, when you made this record, but, um, there's some, it's, there's some weird moments. It's definitely very out there. Um, uh, well, it's more out there than Plantasia is. And, um, uh, there's some noises that can only be described as sensual noises. So don't listen to this around anyone you wouldn't want to listen to that around. Um, it was just kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, but it's like <laughs> through this synthesizer and special effects echo stuff anyways all right while we're going through what else am i got here i'm trying to i'm trying to make it all make sense at least to me uh this is one that i got from him as well this is the almond brothers uh an evening with the almond brothers i don't know what year this was oh 2020 but this came out on record store day whenever it came out i didn't get it and i'm an almond brothers fanatic got it from him for a good price um for less than he paid for it on record store day so still sealed and um just gonna throw that in the collection because i don't have it and i'm an almond brothers fanatic last one from his stuff is the ramones pleasant dreams promo uh perfect shape beautiful copy as the ramones album i didn't have so and it was a promo so i had to, had to keep that okay moving right along here um uh, mac so this is the the collection my friend's collection, I was digging through DJ, soul funk stuff, um, all over the place stuff. But this is one, and I hate to bust you guys' bubble. It's not an original press. Um, it's 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 a great record, but it's not an original press. So, Cortex. It's like a soul jazz funk synthesizer fusion record. It's freaking amazing. It's one of those things, like... I would love to have an original of this, but the odds of running across one would be very rare. It's kind of like the type of thing where you'd have to find it on eBay. I believe it was only issued in France, the original pressing was. But just a really, they've got really beautiful uh, female vocals on this and um, just really smooth, great drum breaks. Um, some fantastic synthesizer work. But it goes from prog to. Uh, jazz to soul jazz i mean it's it, it hits all the the right notes this is a meters album look a pie pie um meters if you don't know incredible like new orleans funk 
uh, instrumental type stuff. Uh, but this is an incredible record. I did not have this one. I'm trying to get all my meters original pressing, so the only one I need now is Strutton, which is like pr pretty tough to get. And but I've got all the rest of them. So this is original press on Josie. I got this from him. Uh, was super super thrilled to get this. Uh, Baby Huey, the Baby Huey story, the living legend. I've been looking for an original press of this for years and years. Um, and there one was, uh, the way his stuff is like, he's got some reissues and he's got some original pressings and there's no rhyme or reason. It's not alphabetical. It's not even split up by genre. It's just all on shelves and it's completely random. So I was flipping through stuff and I'd find something. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And then I'm like, crap, it's a reissue. And then I find something and I'm like, Ehh! and, uh, it's an original. So this is one original baby Huey. Uh, he sold it to me for a nice price. Incredible uh, soul singer, a little bit out there, but uh, but awesome, awesome stuff. Really, really good. If you like soul, look up Baby Huey. I'm sure you have that. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, this one I actually didn't get from him, but it's along the same uh, vein. This is a hard hitter. This is a library record. Um, it's on DeWolf Music. Incredible label. Uh, this is, uh, I don't even know if they've ever done a reissue of this, but uh, this is really killer, like, real funky, like, jazz funk type uh, library record. But I got a bunch of library records from him. He has some, um, and let's see, I got, I've gotten a lot of them. But he's got, he's got, he's got more, I believe, he's going to let go of. So, I'm trying to pick out some of the library records. This one, uh, this one's called Pop Art. Uh, it's just kind of a cool, this is not worth a lot. Some uh, library records are worth a lot. Some of them aren't. This one's not, but it's on Day Wolf Music too. Um, and uh, library records are basically, I've, I've explained it before in my videos, but they're basically um, uh, records, music for radio and TV. So if you're doing like an action scene, shooting, and, da, 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 and then so you got high, strong action. So there's like one that would be like, this one's called Rock City. It's on brute music. So this is rock music. So if you are you have a show and it's more, you know, the music's more consistent with rock, then you go through and you're like, okay, there's this one's called Dangerous Bins, On Schedule, Light Traffic, Back in the City, Downtown, Night Groove, Moving Traffic, uh, Central Boogie. And so all these have like hit on a different emotion and a different level. Uh, you know, and this one says like excitement, smooth, fast speed, um, rhythmic, classy, aggression to a fizzle finish. So you can kind of look through and say, okay, well, this is funky movement. This one's fast cutting. He's running. This one's classy, romantic. So uh, it kind of is music for, you know. So that's what library records are. And um, I've been getting some from him really good stuff this one's ryo kawasaki juice holy moly uh that first track raisins just go listen to that um that's the cover so you can see it it's funky it's killer uh this is one it's not like an expensive one uh this is grant green uh the main attractions with hubert laws uh this is a real good grant green soul jazz funk record and it is it's good it's i mean it's funkier than it's jazz i mean it's more on the funky side which i absolutely love i love grant green no matter what he's doing but like the funky stuff it's killer um azimuth uh, this is a iconic uh brazilian record it's got some funky Latin feel drums with some, I mean, almost prog type of uh, leanings to it as well. Really killer record. The original pressings are worth a bajillion dollars, but this is a reissue, which I'm happy to have. And I'll have an original someday, but this is a fantastic record. I've been trying to get any copy of it. Uh, this one's called Moog Indigo, created by Jean-Jacques Perry. Um, this is a Moog record, and it's freaking killer um this is a reissue like a i don't know early 2000s reissue i believe uh but it's just really really good moog synthesizer stuff 
a lot of different feels to this record, but definitely check this one out. That's up your alley. This one's a reissue. This, this is a uh, Hair and Thangs. Uh, this is Dennis Coffey's band, um, and it is amazing. There's a really good cover of Hey Jude on here, uh, which there's a lot of albums that have really good covers of Hey Jude on them. But this is one. I think the original pressings are like 300 bucks. Would love to have one, but this is a reissue, um, and it's really good, funky, uh, kind of out there for Dennis Coffey, but very good stuff. Um, let's see what else we got. Gabor Sabo, uh, Jazz Raga. You guys are going to grill me, and I understand that for the pronunciation of this stuff, but you know what? I like the sound of it, and you guys can't take that from me. Um, but this is good. Like, There's a lot of different feelings to this one as well, but it, it does ha actually dip a little bit into the psychedelia. Uh, but just great guitar player. Really killer stuff. It's on Impulse. I didn't have it, so I picked it up. Um, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place here. Um, so this is one I got, this is one I was looking for earlier. This is Betty Davis. They say I'm different. This is my favorite Betty Davis record. And I've been looking for an original pressing of it. And, and I, and I, I, I forever and could not find one. Finally found one over there at his house and was so thrilled to get it. This is such a stunning record. Um, if, if she's like just she's from North Carolina, but I talk about Betty Davis all the time. But the most amazing, incredible female funk imaginable. Uh, this is Eugene McDaniel's Outlaw promo copy. Um, this one's uh, not as good as Headless Heroes, but it's still very, very good. Um, been looking for it. Uh, this is one he had New Bond too. This is on the Guinness label. Now, the original pressings of this go for like 500 bucks, I think. Um, I kind of collect... This is a reissue. So, I mean, the, the, I didn't even know they ever reissued this one. I saw, I saw it, I was like, oh, that's got to be an original. And it's not. I mean, obviously, when you pull it out, you can tell it's not an original. It's a 2000s press. But while we're on this, I also got two other Guinness records. This is uh, Vilo Perry, Standing Room Only. This is like a rock record. Rock slash country rock. It's a really rare record. It's very good. But it's on that uh, Guinness label. And this one's Bloodsuckers. Um, so this is a more a funky record. You would think it would be more rock and roll or metal or something. But it's funk. But Guinness Records was a record label that basically it was a tax fraud label. So basically they would make all these records. And then they would file them as a loss and get tax returns. Um, so they had no interest in issuing good music. However they did like that those albums are killer anything on guinness almost anything is amazing um let's see going through here this is one i've been wanting for a long time uh this is a uh, psychedelic soul the freak scene i've just not been able to find a good clean press at a good clean price um but really really great record uh psychedelic beautiful stuff this one is just the model of psychedelic rock um it's incredible. I love it. I'm so glad to finally have one. It's in the shrink. It's in very nice condition. Gets us record collectors going. Uh, this is Hendrix Band of Gypsies. And I actually didn't realize I didn't have this already. Uh, but a friend of mine brought this in the shop. This is a Canadian press with the tricolor label, which you don't ever see. It's pretty cool. It's super clean. Um, so I kept it because I didn't have a Band of Gypsies, and I love that record. I don't know how I didn't have one. Um, and I also didn't have one of these, which what the heck is wrong with me? This is a club edition of the Jimi Hendrix Experience Axis Boulders Love Tricolor Label. Um, it's in it's in really good shape. Um, awesome stuff. The another one I've been I've been trying to get. The reissues are hard to get. The originals are impossible to get. I think there's only like a hundred copies. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember. But this is Dark Round the Edges. Uh, really smoking hard rock from the early 1970s. I believe it was like 72. Fantastic stuff. This is on A Karma. It's on green vinyl. So I finally got one of those. Even though it's A Karma, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, Future Flight. Really cool, funky uh, record. A friend of mine was selling a copy of this for like 125 bucks, which was about what they cost. Not a big deal. And I was like, like, man, I don't know. It's kind of a lot. I don't know that I like the record that much. So I was doing some research and went on eBay and somebody just listed this for 35 bucks. And it was like, it's in great shape. And I don't know why, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy that one. And 
so, sorry man <laughs> really good um late 70s early 80s was it 80 uh 81 uh funk good stuff um and we'll see a couple more things here um i just want to remind you guys don't sleep on grand funk railroad just don't do it uh they're amazing amazing this is like a super clean in the shrink copy i've had it for a little while but um if you like the early 70s hard rock grand funk railroad those early records are so freaking good just don't sleep on them they're amazing i just want to let you guys know so listening to that record earlier i was like gosh this is so good i don't even know like never hear people talk about it but it's just killer stuff killer um but uh i was gonna talk a little bit about the whole controversy when i was in the storage unit so basically as you can see in the picture i'm sitting there and there's all these so records stack like towers. I posted that picture on Instagram. People lost their freaking mind over it. Like saying, those aren't stacked properly. Those are all going to be warped. I mean, like, tons of these messages, comments, people were losing their minds over it. And I was just like, you know, I mean, I've done this for a while, you know. I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not the biggest expert in the world, but I... I've been digging records for 20 years. I mean, I know kind of what I'm looking at here. And I feel like there's all these people that are these Steve Hoffman forum vinyl nerds that are sitting at home on their keyboards who's never dug through a storage unit in their life, you know. And they're saying, oh, this is stack room. People who have no experience and think they know everything. Uh, and so I kind of posted a... Uh, posted a, a follow-up picture of the storage unit and i just kind of explained like you know sure it's not the best way to store records but it's not the worst way and most of them are okay and i have a record flattener you know so we'll, we'll, am i supposed to not look at them and like every record store that follows me or people that dig and i have one person say you're wrong every single one like probably two or three dozen said i buy records like this all the time never a problem i buy records like this all the time never a problem should you store records that way no if you see records like that look through them who cares i mean it's just the the level of snobbery and ignorance it's just it's unreal we hear these things these these myths about records and we say oh well those uh, get over it like you have to decide whether you are a vinyl snob or a record lover. Uh, sorry if I offended anybody. Don't mean it. I'm just like. It, it's it's not like we don't know what we're doing. Like the record store owners that are out digging for records. I know they're not stacked right. Am I not going to. Let me show you this. While we're on the subject. <clears throat> Got this. Disco Marianne. Soka Fusion. Um, record. Perfectly flat. At the bottom of the storage unit thing's worth like 200 bucks it's freaking killer anyways i'm supposed to not look through them forget about it last one last thing i'm going to show marcus friend of the channel friend of the instagram buddy of mine sent me some gene richie records this is gene richie at home which i've never seen this but gene richie uh plays like mountain dulcimer appalachian type music um really great stuff and then this one's on folkways and then have this one and i've never even seen this one i've never seen folkways on color vinyl it's got this really vibrant uh yellow vinyl so um it is in really great shape both of them are but this folkways i didn't have I'm really excited to have both of those so marcus thank you for that and then also like um i to give a shout out to larry larry he comments all my videos through postcards and he sends me a postcard like every video I make and like just like that's how he does it I appreciate that Larry it means the world to me and I'm gonna send you something back um, and I go I get a lot of mail from a lot of people and I'm a little backed up on things I need to show but thank you guys so much for always supporting and being nice and watching my videos and all that stuff hope to see you guys next time